What is up, YouTube? Um, NC Herbert here. Uh, it's been a while since I did a video where I actually showed my face, but uh, it's going to be probably one of my last herping series of the year, really, of one of the series. I've only did like, what, eight videos. I really didn't do a lot this year. This one's going to be on a very specific snake, very snake, a snake that everyone is fond of. Probably one of my favorite snakes, and it's really sad releasing this snake. As you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I caught my first copperhead, really, a couple, like a month ago. I kept her. Just, she was sentimental to me. I mean, it meant a lot to me catching my first copperhead while I was alone, really. It wasn't the first one I've ever caught. It's just the first one I've ever caught by myself. And she's a very calm snake. She's a little feisty right now since I kind of, like, brung her here and she was, like, shaking all around. But here she is. This is a uh, gold dust. She is a northern slash southern integrate, uh, Kistradon contortrix, contortrix slash moncasin. Really, really big girl. She's very curious all the time. I mean, you can free handle her. I have before, but I'm just not going to attempt it right now just with her temperament at the moment. I really don't even want to hold her on the hook, but uh, I'm going to sit her down here at the moment just to let her calm down. I'm about to go release her. This is the site that I caught her at earlier this year, July, somewhere around there. Uh, they mostly feed on stuff like mice, uh, rats, a larger copperhead, like maybe four foot would eat a rat maybe. Mice, rats, uh, crickets, frogs, lizards, everything like that, that's what babies would eat. They give live birth, they usually give seven to a litter, maybe six to twelve babies, somewhere around that range. They reach sexual maturity at uh, two years of age, three years I think. Uh, Males are sexually dimorphic. They get larger in size than females. Males top out maybe around 40 inches. That's a big male. There's been up to 44 inches, 46 inches. I'm not. I think there's a 48 inch male copperhead that's in captivity. I'm not sure on that. Females usually top out at 30, 32 inches, somewhere around that range. They're very small and stocky, unlike males. Uh, and males are more longer and slender. They have longer and slender tails. While females have really short tails. Uh, really cool snakes. You can find them. If you want to know how to find these snakes, you want to set out some tin in an area like a field that's really grown up where there's a lot of mice. And you just want to set out tin, you want to check that really early in the morning, like before it gets too hot, maybe before 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Or you can road cruise. They're most active. They're nocturnal snakes. They're active at night. If you go road cruise some back roads, dirt roads, stuff like that, you're guaranteed to find one. Might not be alive. I remember... This year is the first year I've ever found a copperhead at all. I mean, even I did one, and uh, it was a bummer. I found probably up to 15, 20 dead ones before I found a live one. It was so depressing, because I didn't think I could ever find a live one, but I did it eventually. It was at a tent site at an area maybe like hour and a half from here, hour. Found three in one day, actually. It was a very nice day for that. But um, they are really cool snakes, very beautiful snakes very nice pattern I mean not around here really I mean after you catch a couple of them I mean I've caught maybe 13 of them so far now maybe 14 you get to start to judge them as a species I'd really like to catch a pure southern one but mostly all we have here is integrates which really bumps me out they are very cool snakes uh, some of them are rather twitchy and if you find one on the road at night they are completely insane like Oh my gosh, I can't even explain how insane they are. I would like to get up in the camera right now, but I don't have a cameraman here at the moment to focus it on the snake. But um, I'm going to go release her right now, and I'll do another video on that, or a segment of this video. So, yeah. Alright, what is up guys? We're back here. Um, This is one of my 10 sites right here where I caught gold dust at, which is the copperhead that I just did a video on. This is another segment of the video. I had 10 laid all out around this field. Uh, it's a really overgrown field. It's been abandoned for maybe a year or so. And they haven't mowed it at all. A lot of mice here, so that means she's going to have a lot of food. And there's a lot more copperheads in the area, which I have yet to catch, though. But I'm really glad I get to release her back into her home. I mean, she deserves it. I mean, it's not good to take something out of the ecosystem. I was just... I mean, she just meant a lot to me since it was the first copperhead I ever caught. But it doesn't matter now. She's back in her in the home and her habitat. She's always so curious, like she is one of the coolest personalities on the snake I've ever seen, especially a venomous snake. Such a cool snake. 
but I'll get her out and I'm gonna let her go underneath the piece of the tin. Sorry for the faulty camera work. I wish I had somebody here to record this, but I'm the lone wolf around here of a herper. Uh, let me focus the camera back. Such a nice looking girl. And there she goes. See, you would not even know if she was there right now. You would not know. See, that's why I'm always so scared. Because I wear flip-flops all the time. Not the best thing to herp in, but... It's what I do. I haven't got tagged yet, so I'm fortunate. But, um... Anyways, that is the... Northern slash Southern Integrated Copperhead Echistrodon Contortrix Contortrix slash Mycasin. That is the releasing of the snake. Comment, like, subscribe, guys. Thanks for watching.